Gyro Gear Loose here with the next installment of RV Hacking on the Cheap. Today we'll be installing a DC ammeter voltmeter amp hour monitoring computer. This kit comes with the computer shown at the bottom, a shunt at the top which is capable of handling the power from the 12 volt, and some cabling that goes between them. The shunt is important because you are going to interrupt the 12 volt power supply to the trailer and there are sensing wires that go across that shunt to measure the voltage differential which therefore indicates the DC amperage that is being run through the shunt and this is what allows you to measure DC amperage. This will be a slightly more involved installation than many of my others because we will be working on the DC side of the trailer it is imperative that we disconnect all forms of power that go into the trailer. If the AC is connected the inverter or transformer will provide additional 12 volt through the power supply and if the battery is connected well obviously the battery is connected and there will be 12 volts from that. If you disconnect both there should be no power in the trailer at all. Here we are outside and you can see the AC power is in fact unplugged. Here we are at the battery. Again I've disconnected all positive connections. It's okay to leave the grounded negative connection because as long as the positive is not connected there is no current from the battery. You may wish to insulate the positive lead just to make sure it does not brush the chassis or anything else that you don't want it to. Here we are in the power distribution panel. You can see the AC side on the left and the DC side that we will be working on on the right. We can tell the power is off because my meter is dark and because I've thrown every possible breaker. Just as a second precaution, obviously if the trailer is unplugged there should be no power in this panel at all. Just to quickly review what, it, what you're seeing on the DC side, the inverter from the bottom comes up through a thick red wire and a bright white wire, which is probably hard to see there, the bright white wire behind the red. The red goes up here to the positive and here to the negative. This thick white wire here is the battery, is the wire to the battery and this thick black wire is the positive to the battery. Examining the wiring diagram that comes with the meter, we can see that the shunt goes between the battery's negative and the charger's negative and load negative. The charger and load are on one side of the shunt, the battery is on the other. It is important that you can then monitor any current flowing from the charger to the battery or from the battery back to the load. Obviously power that flows between the charger or inverter and load is not going to be relevant to the battery. It doesn't charge or discharge it. That's why we don't interrupt that wire with the meter. Now back at the panel, we know that the wire to the battery is this one here. That is the negative that goes to the battery. So that is the one that we will be disconnecting and replacing a shunt between it and where it connects to the block here. Here we are at the panel with that wire disconnected. I'd like to note at this point an extremely dangerous thing that just happened. Uh, if the camera was rolling, you would have heard two loud pops. Those would be the sounds of those 240 amp breakers popping. The reason for that, I said I disconnected all power to the trailer. Well, I disconnected this wire, and then I reconnected the battery briefly to check that I did in fact isolate the load and battery and charger correctly if I connect the shunt here. Unfortunately, when I reconnected the battery, some little pieces of wire from manufacturing the trailer had fallen between the negative from the battery and load and the positive of the charger. Although there shouldn't have been power going through the circuit when the AC is disconnected, something was in fact connected and this shorted out. Nice arc, blew both breakers, and that's why you want to make sure that everything is disconnected at all times. Even when you think you're safe on one side of this panel, you may not be. Here's the shunt prepared for installation. I've taken that large wire from the battery and connected it to one end and put a new wire on the other end of the shunt which will go back to the bus. Although I bought a 200 amp capable shunt, uh, there would never be that much amperage going through the shunt. This was just for safety. The alternate wire that I've added to the other end of this is actually an 8 gauge which is sufficient to carry easily the 50 amps maximum that, it, that would ever go through this. In fact, it's probably closer to only 40 amps that would go through this, judging by those two polarity breakers. So the 8 gauge wire on this should be safe, even though the original wire appears to be 4 or 6 gauge. It's huge compared to the amperage that should be going through this wire. 
Here the shunt is wired up with the sensing wires. I put green on the load side, load and charger side. That will be my sensing wire. And I've run, in this case, a yellow and a black onto the battery side, which will be ground and what's labeled A ground on the meter. Up on top, I've connected the other end of my shunt wire back into where the large battery wire connected to the power bus. There is no good way provided to mount the shunt into the box. There are no attachment points, so I've constructed this little plastic holder. This should hold it against the plastic housing of the power supply, and the single screw, even if it does contact onto any part of the shunt, should not affect it because it will not change the resistance. Here's the wiring block after wiring the other end of my cable bundle. I've run the red wire to voltage plus as well as voltage in. They're electrically the same, so I just put a little red shunt wire between them. The green wire, which was on the load side of the main 200 amp shunt, I put into the iSense terminal. The yellow wire and the black wire were ground and A ground. There are the last two terminals, and that concludes wiring this. Now we'll plug it in and see if it works. I'm currently getting 12.59 volts. The amperage is going a little crazy. Apparently this meter reads the amperage much more precisely in smaller time slices than I'd actually really like. But we are displaying amps. Here we are in watts, which because the amps are crazy, so is the watts. Here's the operational time. On the bottom, we can display the crazy amps. Here we can see amp hours, and here we can see percentage. This hasn't been calibrated, so these numbers are useless right now. I'll go into calibrating them in another video. The blinking light in the middle is actually a charge indicator, showing that I'm intermittently drawing a little bit of positive current back into the battery. To install this meter, I'm just going to cut a small square hole into the panel, much as I did with the AC meter that I showed in another video. And finally, here is the meter in its final installation. As you can see, the meter is displaying that I have 74.2 amp hours left, which is 99% of my battery, since it's freshly charged. Another nice feature on this meter, for those who are concerned about too much ambient light when camping, it can be turned off. That's turning off the display. The meter is still measuring, it's just not lighting up the cabin with red light. Because quite honestly, with those displays, that is quite a bit of red LED light. It's nice to be able to turn off the meter when you don't want to look at it. This has been Gyro Gear Loose with RV Hacking on the Cheap. We hope you've enjoyed this installation. We'll see you next time.